First we were just testing the concept and it very quickly became standard process. It's the first you know, step on the, the, the journey towards you know, profiling a coffee now. We, we use it on absolutely everything that comes through. I couldn't believe the accuracy of it, like from audible to what it marked. This, if you remember back to the other profiles, there's absolutely no peak, there's no first crack. It's like the coffee is built different, right? Um, and so we knew this was going to be a bit of a, 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 a tricky coffee. Yeah. yeah, and you know, to be honest, we kind of tested it anyway. We roasted it the way we were going to roast it. And I think when you compare it uh, to what resulted, it was just this extremely ugly, rate you know, of rise. <laughs> rate of rise. Yeah. It's going to taste, uh, it could taste burnt, it could taste underdeveloped. Um, it's, it's just not, it's not going to be a balanced yeah. cup or a balanced roast. Uh, so this is, you know, examples from the app. This one's particularly interesting because it's got a very, you know, steep middle um, in not doing a lot straight away and then it just suddenly starts releasing a lot of moisture um, and then compare you know how much it's changing here with say something like this graph here where I expect to you know have quite a consistent run through the middle uh, but then I would want to be wary of having to quite quickly and quite dramatically reduce the gas post first crack to avoid the coffee sort of uh, running off. away, yeah. yeah. I think um, we quite quickly realized that with the access to absolute humidity release that there was going to be like a fingerprint to every coffee and that that fingerprint then could be that knowledge that we would know how the coffee is going to behave in the drum was apparent from the data very quickly. Hi, my name's Tom Floy, and I'm Head of Operations at Square Mile Coffee Roasters. Hi, I'm James Hayden, I'm Head of the Roasting Department. Our approach to sample roasting before was still quite manual. You know, we were using the Akawa, um, but we still wanted to mark first crack accurately because um, we record all of, you know, these details on sample roast as well. You know, when did it crack? What temperature did it crack at? This is all useful information for sort of getting to know a little bit more about the coffee. Early on in the testing, we were really kind of focused on everything that happens around first crack. Because um, we always sort of talk about coffees either flicking or crashing or running away. Um, but the more we used it, the more we were noticing the differences uh, in the middle stages of the roast, um, it's only got so much moisture, the bean. So for it to be sort of releasing it at different stages um, comparative to, to other coffees, we knew that sort of the, uh, the gas adjustments that we made and the timings of those or the, the spread of, mm -hmm. of adjustments, um, we were beginning to be able to dial those in. Yeah, the moisture release craft basically provided that insight into the coffee that we didn't know before. Uh, and there was no way from our, our understanding at least that you could identify how that coffee is going to behave prior to a test roast. Um, and so we've saved a lot on test roasting in the last few months, uh, thanks to Akawa, <laughs> which is great from a, you know, obviously from a, a monetary standpoint, from a financial standpoint, but also I think also practically it's a lot less frustrating because you already understand the coffee before you do a test roast. We were approached by Ikawa um, to sort of weigh in on a new approach to measure first crack or market. And yeah, when, when they showed us the technique or they talked around what the technique would be, um, the fact that it was based more on the humidity or the the moisture release mm -hmm. in the in the in the machine, it was kind of like, okay, cool. <laughs> like you've got first crack sorted, but you have something else completely here. Um, so that was really exciting. Having the uh, humidity sensor in there and that information that we, we get is that it really reduces the amount of test roasts that we do. I mean, I remember one coffee. We were on test number eight, chasing our tails. It's yeah, so hard. The, th the thing is, a lot of the 
things that happen late in the roast are kind of, they're, they're established much earlier in the roast. And um, to see a full picture of, from the moisture release graph of when certain things are happening and to what degree, you can set up your roast with a, yes. a better uh, selection of gas up front or maybe a slightly delayed soak, um, whatever mm -hmm. it is that you use to get to where you want to end yeah. up. But, um, in that respect as well, it's definitely reduced the amount of testing. Definitely. We were able to do it, you know, better justice um, using uh, this, yeah, yeah, rather than sort of chasing our tail and just losing coffee yeah. in the process. Yeah. The demo unit with the humidity sensor in it, like, you know, getting those moisture release graphs, it was so valuable that it was very quickly part of our process. Mm -hmm. And so when Harry came and had to retrieve it to do some more testing, you know, back when there was only one unit in the world, um, that was pretty hard for us. Yes. There was a lot of buzz around the second demo unit being dropped off. Yes. Finally yeah. to have it back. Yep, definitely. Okay, so this is a, a Guatemalan coffee. Um, you'll notice that there's a much less defined peak around first crack. Um, and what you'll notice as well is there's actually a lot more activity during the, uh, the first half of the roast. Um, and so what that told us was that it was going to be dampening the probes and maybe lagging in the middle of the roast. But also the fact that the, the first crack event is not as defined um, or as dramatic. We know that this is potentially a coffee that is going to, um, it, it, it will seem like it's holding more heat, like it, the, the end temperature is increasing a lot, sort of more. Um, another example, um, so say, this is a natural coffee. Uh, this is actually a, a Chinese um, coffee. Um, and again, this is much less defined at the end here, but also there's, there's more consistent um, moisture release through here. Um, and it's one of the things we've noticed in the past with natural coffees is they will turn around and then they'll just seem to just start losing energy. We've got another example here. You know, now we see difference in the rate of release graph here, but that difference is the, the way that we we plan our profile, uh, profile accordingly, and you know we just end up with consistent roasts. Now that you with the Akawa, you can really not only do you know the sample roast is better because it's done the crack for you, so that's that's one box already ticked, and then the second is that you can profile that coffee much more efficiently from a waste, but also from a time standpoint that we can then ready a coffee for market much, much more quickly. You can see from the stamp of moisture release that it's going to need a little bit more heat. And so then you apply that understanding to when you take it to, a, to the production roast or a test roast on a full scale. Yeah. Um, and if you're talking at 500 pounds a test roast on a full bag, you know, every, every bit of knowledge that you can glean is really, really useful um, to getting to that point where it's ready to use, ready for taste descriptors, ready for, ready for shop. <laughs>